Welcome to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast, a relaxing and informative show where we explore anxiety, panic, and PTSD, sharing how you can overcome them for life. Aloha, welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I am so happy to be with you again today as together we can consider the many ways to bring your mind and body back to its natural peace and calm. In today's episode, I'm talking about finding stability and serenity, the role of grounding in managing anxiety. Now, grounding is also called earthing. You've probably heard it called both things, but we definitely need the earth if we're going to be doing our grounding. And summertime can give us even more opportunities to give some of these health and healing grounding ideas a try. And what grounding can do is really help to heal the overexcited nervous system. And today I want to talk about grounding and why it's good for your anxious nervous system. The concept of grounding, also known as earthing, as I said, is based on the idea that connecting with the earth's electrical energy can positively affect our health and our well-being. And so it involves physically connecting our bodies to the earth's surface, typically by walking barefoot on the ground or using conductive materials. Now, Back in the day, we used to say when we were trying to get people to calm down or just to take a breather, it was always like the typical thing was get your hands in the dirt, you know, meaning garden or do something, work in the yard, pull weeds, do whatever. But it's kind of funny because I wasn't thinking about it in the terms of grounding or earthing back in those days, but I can see now how important it is and how easy we could do it by just getting our hands in some dirt because the earth carries a mild negative electrical charge. And when we come into direct contact with it, such as through our bare feet or our skin, we can absorb its electrons. These electrons are believed to act as antioxidants in the body, helping to neutralize harmful free radicals and reduce inflammation. Now, let me say, inflammation is the base problem of so many issues, anxiety included. We are inflamed from our stress. So anything we can do to put some of that fire out is really helpful. Grounding, earthing, or connecting with the earth's energy can have various benefits. And some of these are, like I said, reducing inflammation. Because inflammation is a contributing factor to many chronic health conditions. Grounding is thought to help decrease inflammation by neutralizing excess free radicals and promoting a more balanced immune response. Secondly, grounding can help by improving sleep. Grounding may support better sleep by helping to regulate the circadian rhythms and reducing stress levels. It's been suggested that grounding can help improve sleep quality and increase feelings of relaxation. Now, that sounds good to me. I don't know about you guys, but if all I got to do is get my feet out on the earth, this could be really helpful. And third, we can have grounding boost the mood and reduce stress. By walking barefoot on the earth or using grounding products, it's believed to have a calming effect on the nervous system, promoting relaxation and reducing stress and anxiety. It may help balance stress hormone levels and enhance overall well-being. And fourth, grounding can enhance energy and vitality. I don't know about you, but when I was living my anxious years, I was exhausted. Maybe some of you out there are tired. Maybe some of you are exhausted. Dealing with 
constant anxious symptoms and sensations or fearing that something's going to go wrong or living with a mindful of what ifs is exhausting. And so maybe a little earthing can give you a boost. Advocates of grounding suggest that connecting with the earth's energy can increase energy levels and improve overall vitality. By restoring the body's natural electrical balance, grounding is believed to promote the optimal functioning of bodily systems. While anecdotal evidence supports the benefits of grounding, scientific research on the topic is still limited and ongoing. Some studies have shown positive effects on inflammation, sleep, and stress reduction, but more rigorous research is needed to establish the full extent of grounding's potential health benefits. Now, what I want to say here is these lifestyle changes that we can just go and do, I know it's nice that they should do more rigorous research and establish exactly what it is that's going on, how it's working. But if you feel better by going out in your yard with bare feet every day, just do it. (laughs) I don't see the downside. So I I look forward to the research as it uh, comes out more fully as to how and exactly why all of this is working. But I know personally that it's great for me. I know that walking on the beach because wet sand is great for grounding and earthing. And uh, if you're interested in trying grounding, you can start by spending some time walking barefoot on the grass or sand or soil. And I even know that it also works on concrete, especially if the concrete is wet. So if you have a carport or a garage or a basement with concrete floor, I believe that you can ground there also. I had one of the little meters that showed you what the charge was. Like if I put it on my bed, I wouldn't have anything. But when I put it on, let's say the grass, it would show the grounding, whatever the reading was. So it worked on concrete too. So not as much as on the grass or the wet sand, but geez, that could be great for the winters when maybe you don't want to be outside in the cold in your bare feet. But there are also products that are available. Like I said, I was using this meter that came with some grounding mats and sheets. You can get just a mat that you have your feet on while you're at your computer desk, or you can have a sheet that's on your bed so you are sleeping on it. And these allow you to connect with the earth's energy while you're indoors. So again, I think these can be really helpful And I guess if you have some real health issues or whatever, you may want to check with your healthcare team to see if it's okay for you to use some of these products. But I would say put bare feet outside. I don't know anybody who can't do that. So here are several ways that you can practice some grounding. The first one is barefoot walking. We have shoes on and they have noticed some significant changes that happened when we started having rubber soles, because when we had leather soles, we were still getting some grounding, but not with rubber soles or plastic or whatever they are all made out of now. Take your shoes off and walk on natural surfaces like the grass, the sand, the soil. Direct contact with the earth allows for the transfer of the electrons. You could also, like I said, use the grounding mats or sheets. Utilize these specially designed grounding mats or sheets that are connected to the earth via a grounding cord. And you plug that into the grounding part of the outlet, not into the outlet itself, but just the grounding piece. And it's kind of interesting to see how it all works. I found it fascinating. And so these can be used indoors to stimulate the benefits of direct contact with the ground. You could wear grounding shoes or sandals. There's footwear that's available that incorporates conductive materials, allowing for electrical conductivity between your feet and the earth. 
And another thing you could do is gardening or plant care. Like I said, back in the day, we always said, all right, you know, people who were really ramped up, get your hands in the dirt. Engage in gardening activities such as planting, weeding, or watering plants. Working with the soil and plants helps to establish a connection with the earth's energy. There's a reason why we feel drawn to do those things. Isn't it interesting? You could do grounding meditation. Practice meditation techniques while sitting or lying on the ground, allowing your body to connect directly with the earth. Just doing outdoor activities, spend time outside, participating in activities like hiking, camping, picnicking, or simply sitting down or lying on the ground. Because even if you are hiking and, you know, have your shoes on, you'll be taking those off. You know, when you're back at the campsite or when you're done with the day, take those shoes off and connect yourself with the ground. But you'll be sitting on rocks or the ground. It's awesome. There's so many ways we can do this, but maybe we could do a little more if we were being aware that it could be helpful to us. And then there's always beach time. Take advantage of beach environments. This is perfect for this time of year. We're all taking little bits of time for ourselves for vacations, and maybe you're at the beach where you can walk barefoot on the sand and get the benefit from the ocean's soothing sounds at the same time. You could do grounding exercises. You could engage in grounding exercises focusing on breathing, visualizations, and mindfulness to enhance your connection with the earth's energy. So you could embrace nature by hugging trees, leaning against rocks. Like I said, when you're out hiking, even if your hiking boots are on, you can be sitting on a rock, climbing, you're probably scraping your knees on all kinds of things. And really get into it. Lean against these rocks, hug that tree, feel the textures of nature's elements with your hands. There's water grounding also. You could submerge your body in natural bodies of water, like oceans, lakes, rivers, hot springs. Water can be conductive and provide grounding effects. You could wear grounding jewelry or accessories. The grounding jewelry or accessories are made of conductive materials such as copper or silver that facilitate a connection between your body and the earth. You could do your yoga or your Tai Chi outdoors. Practice your yoga or Tai Chi barefoot on the ground preferably in natural settings, to combine the benefits of movement and grounding. Remember that grounding practices may provide subjective benefits for some individuals, but the scientific evidence is still emerging. And like I said, even though our individual experiences may vary, it's free, it doesn't hurt you, it's easy to access, why not give it a try if this could be something helpful to you? Grounding techniques can also be helpful to individuals suffering from anxiety by promoting a sense of calm, stability, and present moment awareness. You know, the grounding can help redirect focus for those who are anxious because anxiety often involves excessive worrying about future events or dwelling on past experience. Grounding techniques help redirect your focus to the present moment by anchoring your attention to your body, your senses, or the immediate environment. This shift can reduce anxiety by breaking the cycle of intrusive thoughts. It can calm the nervous system. Grounding techniques such as deep breathing, walking barefoot on the ground, or connecting with nature have a soothing effect on the nervous system. They activate the parasympathetic response, which is responsible for relaxation and reducing the body's stress response. This can help counteract 
the physiological symptoms of anxiety, such as rapid heartbeat or shallow breathing. Grounding can provide sensory input. Engaging your senses through grounding exercises can be grounding in itself. Focusing on sensory experiences, such as feeling the texture of objects, listening to the calming sounds, or noticing scents in your environment, can divert your attention away from the what-if and anxious thoughts and bring you back to the present moment. Grounding can help enhance mindfulness. The grounding techniques often incorporate mindfulness, which involves non-judgmental awareness of the present moment. Practicing mindfulness allows you to observe anxious thoughts and bodily sensations without getting entangled in them, without getting afraid of them. This allows you to develop a more accepting and compassionate relationship with your anxiety. Instead of fighting it, it reduces its power over you by your acceptance of it. Grounding provides a sense of stability. Anxiety can make us feel disconnected or ungrounded, totally ungrounded. As our thoughts and emotions are overwhelming and uncontrollable, we feel very disconnected. Grounding exercises, particularly those involving physical contact with the earth or solid objects, can create a sense of stability, of rootedness, Feeling connected to something solid and reliable can help alleviate anxiety and provide a sense of security. And isn't that what we are looking for when we are headed down the wormhole? It's slippery. It's scary. We feel like we're not in control. If we could easily find that sense of security, it would be so helpful. Grounding can help you do that. And finally, grounding interrupts the negative thought patterns. Grounding techniques can interrupt the cycle of negative thinking that often accompanies our anxiety by redirecting our attention to the present moment. Grounding helps break the rumination and catastrophic thinking pattern, allowing for a more balanced perspective. And isn't that what we are looking for, that more balanced perspective? We are not needing to be all positive all the time, and we don't have to be all negative, catastrophic thinking, but we can find that middle ground, accepting what is coming and knowing that we can handle it. I hope this show has been helpful for you, and I hope that you will try to get yourself outside, especially with the time of this recording is the day after first day of summer. Like, let's get out there and get our feet on the ground, lay down on the ground, be a kid, and enjoy taking care of yourself and reducing your stress and anxiety at the same time. And now for today's quote. Change what you can, manage what you can't. And that's from Raymond McCauley. I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. Until then, be well and aloha. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. Find more information at theanxietycoachespodcast.com.